It's not a dud. Oh, great. Okay, guys, buckle up. This is gonna get gory. Yep, I'm basically making a video about people exploding. I'm aware of how questionable that is. I love action films, obviously, bloody violet ones especially, but I don't consider myself a gorehound. What I do believe in is the power of blood on screen. Cartoonish, brutal, whatever style you choose, it can be both memorable and also there for a reason. So this video is sponsored by Squarespace, which is a fantastic all-in-one application where you get 24-7, 365 day support to make your own outstanding website. Start your free trial today at www.squarespace.com slash rossitron and use the code rossitron to get 10% off your first purchase. Still today, generally studios feel an R rating, which Blood almost always pushes a film toward, shrinks box office. Two films planned at least at some point to be big and gory recently were made PG-13 and relatively bloodless later on for a better chance at financial success. And since those films did very well, much to the surprise of many, that prevailing sentiment isn't going anywhere. So, choosing to have blood is a statement. Generally, the red stuff, you're gonna have to fight for it. The best way to fight to have it in your film is having a reason for it to be there. Even if it's just to make an audience wince or laugh, it is there to get an emotional response from the viewer that is important to the narrative. It can mean danger, it can show pain, it can be a cause for action with characters wanting to stop the bloodletting, or a consequence to show the violent ends of a nefarious plot. Blood is almost always a highlighter. In video games, it is most often used to show hit detection, and film isn't far off that. In the end, we are all full of blood. The sight of it elicits a response in all of us due to that. It gives you a garish trip, an adrenaline rush. In a way, it's a real, out-of-body experience. It is cinematic. I always remember this infamous Tarantino interview. Why so much gruesome graphic violence. Why not let us imagine because a little Because it's so of it? much fun, Jan. Get it. Blood stands out. It's a red wash of direction by the filmmaker. So then, the glorious gib, a term from games meaning to leave not much but giblets behind, is surely something that stands out more than any other form of gory end. Even in more realistic depictions, generally a gib is either to dramatically show power or an end save for the worst of the worst, to really give them the most clear end. The creator is saying, they ain't coming back. It was used in Jason Goes to Hell to really make that point and turn it on its head a bit, since people are so used to seeing this as the final end, which led to that weird body jumping mess of a film. Okay, so outside of Jason Voorhees maybe, when used for a villain, this is as sure an end as you can get. Ironically though, even if most of the time it is saved for villains, the gorier the explosion, the less painful it seems. It happens so quickly that often it can almost feel a more merciful, if humiliating, end to someone. It is more often about showing power and danger to other characters that witness the vaporization than it is to the character whose end it is. This instills fear and showcases power. In Saving Private Ryan, how do you showcase both the brutal reality of war and show how rudimentary and volatile the weapons these guys are using is? Get a soldier to blow himself up. It is shocking to the characters and jarring to the viewer. Of course, if that is the most harrowing use of a full body explosive death, then at the other end of the blood soaked spectrum, we have the use for comedic effect. From Monty Python to Tropic Thunder, it feels like a punchline, which of course it is with Mr. Creosote and plays on that moment of shock. Like any punchline, it is almost a catharsis. A moment of relief after tension, or a joke, has been built and built to. Though often a moment of surprise, 
the explosive death is rarely not led into. I wanted to talk about this simply to highlight the many and various ways filmmakers can utilize something that is in a way so basic. A person blowing up is usually gonna look the same, but its function in a film, to the story, to the audience, can have an incredible range. It always plays on a mix of relief and surprise linked to a beat of comeuppance or a show of power, but in the hands of a creator who understands gore can have a little more reason than just shock. Something like this can be quite useful as a storytelling device. And simply, in terms of effects, practical or digital, done well, there are a few things as cinematic as this. The Gib really, in both a comedic and harrowing form, is a punchline, a full stop, a conclusion to a bad guy's vicious acts, a surprise built too carefully by a filmmaker looking to shock, or simply the biggest final beat of a constructed joke. They are less seen perhaps than other forms of on-screen bloodletting, but in many ways, cinema's ultimate showcase of bombastic, narratively important violence. I finally started making a little bit of headway on my site, which I'll look to launch early next year. It's been a busy few months, all right. Squarespace has made it incredibly easy to start the site, take time off from, and then just jump right back in and get going at any time, any place. With its 24-7, 365 day support, you can always be sure the experience after making it will be excellent too. And with me, you get 10% off after a free trial. Start your free trial today at www.squarespace.com rossitron and use the code rossitron to get 10% off your first purchase.